Hello and welcome to my next tutorial about PrepoMix. This time I will show you how to perform a steady state thermal analysis of a heatsink. Let's create a new model first. Uh, I will use the three dimensional model space uh, and leave the default unit system. Now I can import the geometry and this will be the uh, step file, uh, th this one. And you can see the simple geometry representing the heatsink. Of course, it was prepared in FreeCAD. Uh, but the ge geometry itself is simple, so there's no need to discuss it further. Uh, let's create a mesh, and uh, this will be uh, maximum element size of uh, one and a half uh, millimeters. And now I will generate the mesh. The mesh is generated now, so I can proceed to analysis setup. Let's uh, hide the mesh for now, and uh, I'll define the material first. Uh, I will specify just the thermal conductivity. This is needed for steady state uh, heat transfer analysis. Uh, for transient analysis, I would also have to specify the specific heat and density. Uh, and uh, for uh, coupled thermomechanical analysis, uh, you can also use thermal expansion. But for now, let's just define the thermal conductivity, which is needed for steady state uh, heat transfer analysis. And the value uh, is defined in my spreadsheet. So you can see. Uh, all the inputs and uh, outputs here. Uh, so the value of thermal conductivity is this one. So let's specify this uh, in uh, PrepoMax. You can see that the units are slightly different, but the value will be the same in this case. Uh, I will have to create a section also, uh, just like with mechanical models. Uh, and now I can define a new analysis step. For the first time, we'll use the heat transfer step. Uh, and now I can choose between steady state and transient analysis, uh, but I will leave steady state on in this case, since we want to analyze just the steady state uh, in this case. Let's confirm this, uh, and now I can create boundary conditions and loads. For boundary conditions, there's just the temperature boundary condition, but we won't use it in this case. And for loads, there are several types of, uh, of the thermal loads. Uh, in this analysis, we will use mainly surface flux, uh, which will be applied to the bottom phase of the heatsink. And when it comes to the value uh, of the surface flux, uh, you can see it uh, defined right here. Uh, so uh, let's uh, type this in uh, PrepoMix. And this will be the, the value for the applied uh, heatsink. This is actually uh, calculated for, for, the, uh, for the value for the surface because uh, normally the input is 60 watts. Uh, just uh, I had to divide this by the surface area uh, to input it as surface flux in PrepoMix. All right, uh, now let's uh, confirm this and I will create another thermal load. And uh, this will be convective film. Uh, so we will simulate uh, convection uh, in the, the, uh, on acting on the surfaces w w in contact with air. Of course, the, the heat flux that we apply to the bottom represents some kind of uh, chip or other uh, device that generates heat. Uh, and uh, this heat is going to be uh, dissipated by uh, the heatsink. All right, so now let's uh, apply the convective film. I will select all the faces uh, and just uh, deselect this one. Uh, so I will leave all the other faces. And when it comes to the value, uh, I will specify the sink temperature. That's basically the ambient temperature. Uh, and the film coefficient, uh, I also have film coefficient defined here, just in different units. Uh, so I have to uh, change this and that's the uh, value I will use for film coefficient. Bas this is basically a uh, heat transfer coefficient. So you can find this easily in literature, in various tables, books, uh, for different types of, of convection. Let's confirm this. And now the model is uh, fully defined uh, and I can submit the analysis and wait for the results. The results are already available, so let's check them. Uh, we are interested in temperatures, uh, in the distribution of the temperature and uh, actually maximum value. And let's go to the spreadsheet and uh, here you can see uh, the analytical solution for this problem. This is approximate solution, uh, just an estimation. And it works. Th this uh, sheet works in quite unusual way uh, because uh, here I have the input uh, heat flux, uh, the, the 60 watts that I apply to the base of the heatsink. And uh, this is the result that I'm actually looking for. Uh, but uh, to find the, the result, uh, I have to change this value uh, until uh, this value here becomes e almost equal to, to the input uh, heat flux. So for example, if I wanted to apply 70 watts, uh, then I would have to uh, change this value until uh, it becomes uh, equal to the 70 watts here. 
but in this case we uh, applied 60 watts so uh, let's uh, change this back uh, it was uh, like this uh, i could uh, further change this uh, it's just a matter of accuracy uh, but let's uh, leave it like this uh, so you can see that this temperature that we expect uh, at the base of the heatsink is around uh, this value Let's check this in Prepomex. Uh, we can of course use the query tool uh, to check the uh, to check the values uh, on the surface, and you can see that it's not uh, very accurate. Uh, I mean, the accuracy is pretty good, but the, this, this solution is just an estimation, so uh, it's not uh, perfect. Uh, but still, uh, we have the uh, estimate of the temperature that we can expect at the base of the heatsink. Uh, that's it for this Prepomex tutorial. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, as always, feel free to ask any questions and suggest topics with future tutorials in the comments. Have a nice day and see you in the next video.